What's up, everybody? Every time we have friends over at our house, they always are impressed with our litter box. Um, basically, what we did was we got a litter robot and modified it and put it in a plywood enclosure in our garage with a doggy door through the wall. And it's apparently no one else has seen something like it before. And uh, we certainly like it. It works out great for us. It's nothing fancy, but um, it works. It does the job that it was intended to. If you're not familiar, a litter robot is a robotic litter box. Um, we modified it to where instead of the litter, I'm sorry, instead of the waste dropping into a small catch pan that's in the bottom of the litter robot, it goes straight down into a large rubber bed container. Um, and then the whole, the whole thing sits in a enclosure that's in our garage so we don't have to see it, smell it, don't have to mess with it uh, very often at all. Really the only thing we have to do is add litter to it because obviously the waste uses, it uses clumping litter um, so we just have to add to it and then occasionally we'll change out the catch pan, the new one down below, which can sometimes go, I mean, we've gone as long as two or three months without changing it because believe it or not, it just really does not produce strong odors. Um, litter does its job, it works well and, uh, it's in the garage. So we, uh, we really like it. We kind of just came up with the idea on our own. We've never built anything like this before. Um, but it just kind of made sense. And so we made it work and we've actually, this is our second litter robot now. The first one we used for several years the same way um, worked great, but uh, we had three cats. And so that's actually kind of what led us to, to modify it in the first place is we were constantly emptying that tray. So um, three cats were also, I guess, wearing on the motors quite a bit. And eventually it just got to where it was easier to buy a new one. And they had some new features, I believe, on the new ones as well. So we just replaced it. Um, I think we made a couple upgrades to the enclosure at that time too and I took some videos showing how you modify the little robot and kind of how you could build the enclosure because like I said people are always asking you know saying it's a great idea um, so anyway uh, if you have any questions about this setup just leave a comment uh, and I'll try to answer it but it's pretty straightforward um, so without further ado here you go enjoy all right so this is the cat cabana as we call it it's currently in the process of having a different litter robot put into it. We've used the previous one for probably a couple years now and it's time to upgrade to a, a new one. The other one's motor's kind of on its last leg and the globe had gotten so dirty it was easier to just replace it. Um, right now we have the tunnel portion removed so you can see the cat door. This is where the cats come in through the, uh, this is actually the laundry room of the house. This is the back side. We've got the blocking portion on right now so they can't come through while we're servicing it. But they come in through here. They enter into the tunnel portion. They then go up this carpeted ramp and into the main enclosure. In here, the litter robot sits here on top of this trap door. And below it, you put your catch pan uh, a large Rubbermaid container with a trash bag under it. We have up top LED lighting so that when it's dark in here and the lights are out in the garage they can still see. And then um, you see we have the power adapter for the litter robot. I'll show you some other features here in a little bit but first I just wanted to uh, show you the the main um, portion of the enclosure while the litter robot is not inside it because we're about to about to put it in. It's basically just made of uh, MDF plywood and uh, two by fours. So it was very easy to construct. Did it all um, on my own. No plans or anything like that. And we put two hinged doors on it. Originally this door wasn't hinged, but we found that having both doors hinged was, was pretty important for servicing it. So I'll try to get some more shots of it here for you. Pretty simple, even for someone with very basic skills or no skills like myself. Like I said, this is just a carpeted ramp so that when they track litter out of it, they hopefully will just leave it on the carpet and not bring it into the house. And we drilled these holes into the doors so that they have you know ventilation because it gets pretty hot in here in the garage in the summer months, and so that they can see out into the garage gives them a little bit of entertainment. When they're in here and they're hearing us in the garage coming and going, they want to be able to 
let's see what's happening in here so now they can see out. That's actually something we added fairly recently. Okay, as you can see, we here have the first litter robot um, and the new litter robot. This one's the one that's already been modified. Basically what I've done is cut out the tray or the catch pan out of whatever the terminology they use is. Cut a hole out of the bottom of it and it cut a hole out in the bottom of the power base so that when combined there is the um, poop or waste for lack of a better word goes straight through. Um, so that's what we need to do to this other one. Uh, the shape, I don't know how I chose the shape that I, that I went with, but um, it really doesn't matter as long as whatever you know goes through here will go straight through. So on the new one, I've gone ahead and kind of sketched out just a rough uh, shape of what I used on this one because it's worked for so long. And then the same down here. Again, it's really not crucial. In fact, this is a little bit of a different shape than I used on this one. Cut this out just using a Dremel motor tool with a cutting wheel, which is basically just like a sanding disc, and these will break from time to time. You have to replace them, so I'd buy, you know, like a 10-pack of them. And as you do this, it's going to melt the plastic, so I would go slow. Okay, I'm done cutting the hole out of the base and out of the tray. Uh, it was quite a bit more difficult to cut out of the base because of those reinforcements, uh, but I was eventually able to get it done. Uh, I had to go a lot slower and broke quite a few of the cutting discs, so I would definitely make sure I have quite a bit of those on hand. All right, stick this in here. Looks like the holes are gonna work. Um, I did go a little bit over on the hole on the base. Looks like it's a little bit larger than I needed because obviously the tray ends here and the hole on the base is larger, but that's not a big deal. Um, it's going to do the job just fine. And as you can see, the hole in the globe is here, so it's, it's even smaller than these holes. So this will work perfect. Uh, I would recommend that you use something to secure the tray to the base because it'll have a tendency to come out, I found. Uh, for whatever reason, just because it's lighter weight now, I guess. So, I, at one point I was taping it, but that didn't work very well. So, I started where I just used one of these little hook and eye combinations. Just put one in the tray and one in the base, and then they can attach like this. That way you can still remove it if need be. Even though once you have this set up, um, you won't need to remove it really ever. But you still want to have that option. So. I'll just get this installed and then we'll uh, pretty much be ready to set it up in the uh, enclosure. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and install the new litter robot. We have the tunnel installed now on the uh, enclosure. You can see down here, this is the portion that covers up the cat door that comes from inside the house. And if we look inside the enclosure, you can see that all this is now enclosed. Whereas before it was open for full cleaning and to show you how this is built. We just got pieces of MDF down here and on the other side to keep the cats from being able to get down into the, basically get out of it and into the garage. So, um, as you can also see, we now have the litter trap, which is just a large Rubbermaid container with a lawn and leaf bag, which is basically the biggest trash bag you can get uh, put down into it. And that catches all the litter center it under the hole and we're good to go so now we're going to get the new the new litter robot base we're going to center it on top of the hole i've already got the power adapter run with an extension cord into here the extension cord also splits off for the um, led track lighting up here go ahead and plug this in so we got power, looks good. All right, we've got the new, to us at least, uh, extended globe with a skylight on the back or whatever they're calling it. Uh, we've got one cat that's extremely large and so we thought it would be nice to give them a little bit of extra light in here and a little bit of extra space. So we'll go ahead and get that installed up on top. 
Now I will say be careful the first time you're you're cycling the, a new unit because we had a couple instances here where it would it would run a an empty cycle basically and we already had litter in the globe because we we're actually using this globe with the old base for a while. Um, anyway, it would actually run, did, did an empty cycle and emptied out all the litter um, and it caused a huge mess. So just be careful of that. Uh, you might want to go ahead and empty out the globe the first time that you're running it. Anyway, got this installed. Um, we'll go ahead and do a full cycle and make sure everything works right. Make sure our pressure sensor is, you know, set properly and this actually is set pretty pretty well so that the weight of a cat is going to going to kick that off and then you know seven minutes later or whatever it is it's going to run the cycle so looks like everything's working as it should it's plenty of space in the back for the uh, extended bubble so we should be good to go and I don't think we're going to have anything in there to drop down but as you'll be able to see if we did have something, um, once once the doors opened up, it would just go straight down to our trash can down there. Yep, there actually is something in there. Let's see it. Can't see it. Well, you just have to trust it's there because you can look in there and see where it's working. <laughs> so it makes it a lot nicer because instead of having to clean out this uh, small tray every, I don't know, week or a few days or however often people with two cats that eat and poop a lot have to clean it out, uh, we really only have to clean it out probably. Um, every month or every, as, as often as our nose can stand it. In reality, it, it doesn't start to smell all that often. Um, so we just want to keep this area clean for our cats and that's our main concern. And then if it starts to stink in here in the garage, which like I said, really it, it doesn't, the litter does its job, um, then we empty out that catch pan, but otherwise it holds a lot. So all we have to do is keep the globe filled with litter, keep this area vacuumed from time to time and um, the robot pretty much does everything else. So, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, hope you enjoyed our idea for a litter robot enclosure. That's it.